All right, I'm about to uh, get to the machine shop here and pick up the blocks so I can start painting them. And then uh, dropping off the cranks that I tested for run out so that he can polish them up and get them all prepped and everything for putting together the engines. And I got a set of uh, valve springs here that I'm hoping that he has time that he'd be nice enough to test the you know, coil bind and everything on, we'll see. We can just do it from the front. And bring the cranks in. And here's a shop. A little hole in the wall kind of thing. Can I just park here and then yeah. the load? Yeah, we can park here on the load. Alright, let's do it. Yeah, there's one in this box. In these boxes too? Yeah, those are the springs I want to test. I'll just grab one of these cranks here. Real quick. Oh, all the cranks are in the floor too? Yep. There's all the blocks already. I'll just put it right here for now. The last one. Get the last one. Beautiful. That's good. Not going anywhere. Ready? I mean, he's still got to machine all the surfaces and stuff. So. Oh. Yeah, move the truck. Hey, Terry. <laughs> you like that? So then on the cranks, I, hopefully didn't wear out, but I marked what I got, yeah. Like that one's two thou. And then I rechecked this one, and that one's one thou. And then Toyota spec is uh, two thou four hundreds, or whatever. But I don't know. But that's their Toyota factory spec. But anyway, we need five total. So we got six here. So you can not do one of them. But I brought an extra just in case it's a crack. You got a nine gear. This, yeah, this one is a non gear. This, so, this one that you already did is for mine, right? That's a non gear. This one is also going to be mine. So, three three of the five cranks, we're going to have to write this down. Get the, the drill out. So, you already drilled this one out. So, you got to drill two more for the bigger holes. Does that make sense? <laughs> no? <laughs> yeah, bring them over here. See, I just used a, a cylinder block. I put two bearings in. Yeah, that works. Yeah, bring him here. I mean, he'll. You're just gonna see how good I am, I guess, on one of them. <laughs> Though, like I got. Not pretty much. No 
pulled it all over. But two, that was a bad one. I got, like I said, one was two thou, one I got a thou and a half, and then the other ones were all one thou. So one of the one with two thou you can do, or whatever, or we can just do oversized bearings and grind it straight, right? Well, yeah, write some stuff down. I'm trying to do it like a couple of them lower budget. So out of five engines, three of them will have bigger bolts. Two of them are lower budget builds. They're not getting as nice of wrist pins. They're not getting as nice of stuff. You know what I mean? So, so we need. Three get bigger crank bolts. Yes. Two of those are yours. Two of those are the non-gear style which one of them is already 100% complete because you did it before in the last bunch. Yeah, in the box. It's done, yeah. Yeah. The other three... One of the gears gets bigger bolts. Just one of them. One gear. Yeah. One gear style gets bigger bolts. Bigger bolts. Will that one have different pistons and stuff in it also? Mine, the two for me, and this one are all going to be the same where it's those DLC coated. Same thing you did last time. There's going to be three engines exactly the same. Got it? Those are going to get the good parts. Yes. The other ones are going to get some cheap parts. Yes. Not that it's bad, it's just tool steel pins instead of C350 pins and blah blah blah. Because the one guy, this one guy in Arizona wants one, but he doesn't want it like all the way to the top. <laughs> like I'm going crazy. And then it, I didn't have those bigger holes before and it worked. I just keep going more and more in depth. It's <laughs> about it. I have guys that come in here, and, you know, we yeah. do, like on Chevy stuff, we get a black gear and we run out for them. Yeah. To change out. Yeah. Some guys wanted the chrome L19 style. You know, they're pressing bolts with nuts. They want those chrome ones. Are they gonna hold any better for what he's doing? No, he says. But the guy told me I'll sleep better at night. Looks like okay. Yep. Oh. And then if we could just real quick, there's this GSC doesn't make the Beehive anymore, and I was thinking about doing a backup head, so I started buying parts. If we could just test one spring for fun. Do you have the valve stem height that you do mine at at all? Do you have the valve some height and you put the heads at? No, no, that's all right. Maybe. Valve seats. Yeah, but I'm not going to have a valve seat for it. Okay. Did I do that head when I did the box? Okay, here's what... Dale did my head, so whenever he was here. So he probably didn't write anything down either. <laughs> that's all right. Sometimes when I'm going to do a project like that, on the back of this sheet, yeah. you know, I'll write stuff down. And I'll write... You know, like this this guy's head cylinder head stuff is on here. Yeah. Install the heights and pressure and whatnot. Yeah. Sometimes I'll do that even though I, I may not bolt it on. Sometimes I don't. Yeah. I'll write it on so the melt turn one spot. Yeah. Yeah. So I just we, want to test one. We can just test them for you know, seat pressure I just, I just and coil bind and coil bind. And then work backwards. Backwards and then Yeah. Then what basically what you've got from we just go coil bind, go back safe. What do you have for lift? And then we go up to yeah. that. And that would be technically would be seat pressure yeah. if we shimmed it to coil. And bind. that's what you did last time you shimmed it. So maybe <laughs> I gotta convert my lift to inches here on my phone. Anyway, so I don't forget. <laughs> I don't have an inch lift. It's in millimeters, but I can convert it. It's 11.5 divided by 25.4. 452, 53,000. 
450 basically. Let's see, you can see where I hit coil behind on 374. Yeah. Back it off just a little bit. Bang, it got. Yeah, a lot. So I'm just off the coil line, so. Uh, I'm gonna safely say 790 for coil line. 790 height and pressure is? That would be coil bond. Um, maybe it's just a little off of that, but that's 277 max. At coil line. So if you're trying to get like maximum pressure out of this thing. Um, 50 or 40 thousand? 50, yeah. That's full lift. At 840. And then I got 452,000 valve lift. 452. <laughs> so we got 840. 452 would be one, what, two, 92? Wouldn't be bad. No. The ones that I was doing before was 92 of the seat and it's been working fine. Yep. These are higher pressure. Yeah, that's that's pretty low well compared to some of the we just don't like Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. regular beehive spring usually 260 to 280 range. Yeah. Well, good ones like that. Yeah. Kick some really good ones up to 320, 320. Oh, that Dual springs, not yeah. Whether or not they really need it, but you know, when this guy's getting about a thousand. Of course, if you're gonna hit 14, it really might be like that. Second? If you're gonna hit 14,000 again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 14,000 again. <laughs> it's not, their oil pump. That's not funny, is it? <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Oh, that's just a little loud, huh? Yeah, it'd be loud in this room. Yeah, this would be a pain to do like mine kind of engine with a turbo and everything. Yeah, yeah, I've, I've seen videos of guys, you know, with engine dyno, those things, and it looks like it's a freaking at least a two day deal, you know, yeah, just to get all the piping, especially if it's got piping and intercooler, yeah, and then wiring harness, depending on what you've got. That might be all easy if it's a yeah, if it's just a harness thing, and that's what I got this for. Some guys will put laptops over here at the table, and, yeah. Yeah. I don't understand anything you guys are telling. You don't know? You say it. So like right, don't waste your time. You know I. See. <laughs> oh, as far as what I'm talking about, I don't know anything. Oh. Well, the spring. Like the spring. If I collapse this, and that's what I did on the test track. Yeah. I go down yeah. the coil line. All these things just stack. Okay. It's, it's tight. Let's say it's tight at mm -hmm. one inch. Uh, if they're going to be installed, at like. An inch and a half, I can go down a half an inch, okay, and then they're tight, okay, which you don't really want. Uh, so then we would install, we would say, I only want, I only want to go down to uh, an inch 50. So I'm 50 thousandths away from these things going tight. That's most I can do it. So now I'll add my 400, let's say 500 thousandths of lift to that inch 50 spec. Now I got an inch 550. That's where I need to put them in at. Inch 550, when it goes open a half an inch, now it's an inch 50. It's 50 thousandths away from... All the, all the coils touching. Tight. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now if, I, if, now if I had a spring that was... Let's say I had 300 thousandths left instead of five, and I put them in at the same spot, an inch and a half, they're going to go down to an inch two. Okay. That's 200 thousandths away from what they can be. It's not squeezing them all the way down. It'll start to squeeze these upper ones first okay. and not the middle one. So it'll literally come down and it'll go and it'll, and leave, yeah. it'll leave these. 
and it'll wear these out quicker and make a break rather than using them all. All of this, okay. You want to use them all, not just half of them. <clears throat> and how you learn all this stuff? Talking to people yeah, that make this stuff? Cool. Oh, YouTube. <laughs> YouTube. <laughs> Bringing stuff in and breaking it. <laughs> I mean, I know some stuff about, I, I know how to change brakes, change my oil, change the alternator, change the bell, but basic stuff, not like you yeah, guys said. just it's stuff that you just learn, you know, it's kind of like <clears throat> when we would set heads up for those tractors mm -hmm. and they were wearing out. And I called the spring company and the guy mm -hmm. said, this is what you need to do. Okay. It's like, okay, that makes sense. And that's how I learned to do all the stuff because, you know, he teach me. You ask questions. Yes, yes and uh -huh. he was showing me. He was just, and I learned you do it, it, I'm just telling you. <laughs> that's what you I know, learned. That's because pff, I don't need to do all that. those bases. Some customers probably wouldn't want to hear you say it. But there's times where you can try and see what happens. Yeah, I, I, I do that all the time in the machine shop. When I'm when I'm machining something odd, I want to try this. I don't know. Or, well, that didn't work. <laughs> oh yeah, that worked. That was easy. Yeah, yeah. you don't know. What are you gonna do? What I did, I did my water pump in my uh, 1998 truck by myself. It worked. <laughs> <laughs> so, mm -hmm. Like you guys say, you know, just like. Do watching it. other people and yeah. asking questions. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. That, I'm pretty sure that takes years to learn. More beginning of the process season. Yeah, basically. We didn't get too far. Just, you know, three months until yeah. got me business. It's like the season's over. It was so happy. Yeah. What are you going to do? <laughs> what are you going to do? But yeah, there's other guys. I've been, like, I told I I, I, I keep been, like, one, I keep bugging the guy. I'm like, can you maybe at least just send me the pins so I can get them coded? Cause I, I gotta wait on that. Oh yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, that would make sense. Yeah, get them things done so you can take care of them. I go because even though I get them. All right, here are all the uh, five blocks back home. So now I'm gonna get to. Uh, taping them up and get them ready to do a little pour 15 on them, paint them, and then I'll bring them back to the machine shop for the finishing stuff. That pour 15 stuff's nice because you can even machine and then hot tank them and that stuff just stays right on there. It's great. So I'll get this all going. <laughs> 